It's the CNT original movie, Fear the Dark Finger. Coming up next, it's the tale of directionless heiresses and pill poppin' playboys on I'm Rich. Hey, race fans, it's coming. Saturdays, don't miss the Patriot 500 live from Patriot Beer Motor Speedway. It's edge of your seat excitement as rednecks drive in the circle 500 times. Welcome to I'm Rich, the show that puts avarice firmly on the national agenda as we zealously and emphatically discuss things rich people have. You'll never afford, and anyone with good taste would never want. In this week's show, we've got tray rich people who inherited truckloads of money and spend it ostentatiously. We've got flashy criminals who've bribed congressmen to be allowed to live as they want and get plump business contracts. And we'll get down and dirty with fab politicians who siphoned off 50% of the gross domestic product of poor countries to buy speedboats, servants, snakeskin sofas, and incredible surround sound sanitariums. Plus, we've got Liberty City's most vacuous debutante cokeheads going head-to-head -head and giving it in a race to see who can visit the most STD clinics and rehabs. It's glamour, guts, and really gross greed. From diamond-encrusted glory holes to the proper pronunciation of Ibiza or Ibiza. We've got a full half hour of gawking at the possessions of rich people and thinking, that should so be me. Why am I a vapid waste of a human being? Maybe I'll blow my brains out during commercials. All because you're not on I'm Rich. First up, Chloe Parker. If you don't know who she is, you're a pop culture retard, and that's deadly serious. This 24-year-old sometime felcher, an heiress to a magnastronomosity of a fortune to the tune of $950 billion. She's one seriously hot number. She's got fake tits stuffed with rubies as well. It's luxury plastic surgery taken to a whole new level. Now, to fill up time, a person is going to repeat what I just said in a different way while we watch the same footage again. Chloe Parker is 24 years old and really hot. She's worth a lot of money and is totally vapid. She's had a lot of plastic surgery, but otherwise is devoid of meaning. She's rich. She's got it all, and money is everything. She has a daddy, money, and one of those tiny little dogs that rich people keep in their vagina. I want one of those so badly. Woof woof. So you think your daddy is nice? Chloe Parker went from tycoon tot to tycoon twat. She lived in this mega mansion her daddy bought for her after her first period. And when Pop is back in Colombia managing the family's produce importing company, she's out at the Caraways. Fantabulous. Party in Paris and finger blast in Florence. Her amazing mansion has an underwater home theater with midget mermaids, jumbo jet garages, and a 600-foot yacht that costs three million a day just to run. Her penthouse in Algonquin's exclusive Middle Park East District is a little palace in the sky, complete with a moat and drawbridge, torture dungeon, and servants with scurvy, all on the 55th floor. This is real estate the rest of us can only watch on television and masturbate over. I'm masturbating right now, furiously. Now Chloe is best friends with Jill Von Krastenberg. This all fault terrible has been ruling Liberty City's nightlife for the past two Two years since her 11th birthday. Her daddy gave her a pair of diamond miners for her 12th birthday and after she could walk again sent her to 15 of the most exclusive boarding schools all at the same time and got her a treehouse with servants. Plus she's got a flying rabbit. Money. Omnipotence. When you're this amazing, the laws of nature just don't apply. Your life is like a soda commercial where everything is extreme. Look at this house! That's what it takes to make a splash in the ultra-competitive world of being the kid of rich parents who don't pay any taxes. The Von Krastenbergs are among the richest people in the world, apart from morally, where they're entirely destitute, just like the producers of this show. 
But look at how many sports cars Chloe has. Rumour has it this deliciously defecating debutante screams daddy while doing the dirty deed rotisserie style. They live most of the year in Liberty City at this sumptuous mansion, but pay no taxes because they claim to practice their religion inside their home, taking it off the tax rolls. That's being a real American entrepreneur. That thinking got them a 45-bedroom weekend home upstate. It has a candlelit chandelier in the bathroom and transparent plumbing, so you can eat $100 bills, shit them out, and watch your car car creation as it departs on its journey. Their religion is money, and they are the Pope, the Chief Rabbi, and a serious Ayatollah, all rolled into one. Fabulous. Their shit doesn't stink. And little baby Jill has got her own bedroom in this palatial palace that's carved out of ivory with murals of erotic versions of fairy tales hand-painted by celebrity artists Simon and Nigel. That's how the rich live, with pictures of Little Red Riding Hood taking it in the can from the Big Bad Wolf. Let's take a break while we ponder how all the middle class is just like Red Riding Hood. When we come back, Algonquin's hottest playboy discusses how he spends his money on worthless shit. I shit the bed Got so drunk I gave a dude head Life is just a merciful blur When you pop a piss wasser Piss wasser, don't drink it slow 3 a.m. the bath's up low Sleep in the bathroom on the floor What really matters anymore? All the crap you do all day Who fucking cares anyway? This is beer Drive drunk on the beer Piss water, drink all day It helps your trouble go away yeah, yeah. Piss water, cheap German lager for export only Next week, don't miss the CMT reality show Conjoined Twins, a hot night out This is CMT Welcome back to I'm Rich, the show about rich people that has the production values of a local cable access show. That's because we have to churn this shit out in mass. Luckily, people are stupid enough to watch it. Speaking of churning it out or bopping your baloney on the face of humanity, here's another vacuous rich person we're going to promote for reasons that are entirely beyond anyone's understanding. It's top Algonquin playboy, Tony McTony. TMT is like TNT. This fast-living, fast-fused, but vertically challenged bachelor and Internet 2.0 millionaire has agreed to talk to us about what being rich is all about to him. Uh, since I became really rich, my life is incredible. I got a place with a glass floor so I can take it up some skirts with a special camera and a glass elevator that got a glass jacuzzi in it and I ride up and down for hours. You know what? I'm gonna rub your nose in it. I gone from nerd to hot, quicker than you could say, $750 million in stock ops. Tony's place in Los Santos is legendary. Tony may only be five foot tall, but what he lacks in stature, he more than makes up for in sports cars. Why have one luxury Italian Inferno sports car when you can have two? And why have two when you can have 15? All exactly the same. Each one has monogrammed seats with the special Tony McTony logo. Since I became rich, I realized I needed a logo. So I got the best logo designer to make me one. It cost 15 million just to have it created. The silk thread was shit out by a Trappist monk. It's a yellow M done in an arch on a red background. You've never seen anything like it, people. My towels, my condoms, my gold rim jobs, all of it with the Tony McTony logo. Bitches loving niche. Tony also hires women to sit cross-legged and topless in leather pants in bird cages hung from his ceiling. And they meditate so people really realize just how rich he is. Now, I get laid all of the time, which is great because I was a virgin up until about six months ago. Tony spends his weekends powerboating up the Humboldt alongside Algonquin while he gets his special platform shoes hand-built by Eskimos out of Moon Rock. He likes to get back at the kids who beat him up in school by buying the companies where they're employed and sacking them. Hey, I'm not bitter. I'm just a tiny guy with a lot of cash. 
Next up, we've got Alfonso Vasquez. This guy's rich, and he's got a seriously hot daughter that he's gotta have trouble keeping his hands off of. And wow, is his wife a bitch. She took half his money, just like a slut will. But that half, he doesn't even need, because money rolls in so fast, he has snow shovels to pick it up. Alfonso keeps his daughter January Natasha Vasquez dripping in diamonds. She says she's even got her labia beautifully baroque with an enormous seven carat stone. She's a role model and knows it. Showing girls exactly where their vaginas can take them if they try hard enough. But being this wealthy totally has a downside though. See, she's terrified of trees and afraid that elves will abduct her and have their way with her. And she's never even had to learn to read or chew. It's so awesome. In her world, nothing is impossible except humility and basic spelling. Especially when a manservant chews your food and spits it into your mouth. Private jets, fleets of $300,000 sports cars, waterfall waterbeds, plus they've got a plasma TV in the toilet bowl to watch your favorite shows while you're making yourself throw up an $800 meal. That's what being rich is all about. It doesn't get any better than this. If heaven exists, it won't be this good. Coming up next, boats, yachts, and twats. It's the decadence that you dream of, and it's only on I'm Rich. This is CNT. My name is Stephanie Pearson. I tried dating, but it mostly ended in me just getting desperate and blowing homeless guys. Then I met Nathan on lovemeet.net. We totally hit it off. Then he slit my throat and killed himself. Now we'll be together forever. Thanks, love me. Meet the man, woman, or beast of your dreams. Meeting someone is as easy as logging on, paying for a lifetime subscription, and receiving emails from the worst dregs of society you always feared were out there. Lovemeet.net. Welcome back to I'm Rich. In this section, we've got an in-depth investigation into corruption and scandal in the charity industry, alongside a report from the front line of poverty in our own country and how bent politicians are wasting the money you give them. <laughs> Only joking. Who cares about tales of woe when we've got tales of wow? We're going to talk about wealthy people like they are in any way interesting. And we'll point out how pathetic your life is because you don't have emerald encrusted toilet paper or a pet dragon that shits pizza. That's more, eh? Speaking of shit. <laughs> Liberty City has taken decadence to a whole new level recently, officially becoming the world's capital of stupid money when five generations of inbreeding created a wasp icon so drunk with fame and wealth he doesn't even know his own name. Lyle Cleethorpe V's ancestors made their fortune selling tobacco and slaves, both of which are good. But the Emancipation Proclamation didn't get his family down. They import all their labor from Mexico for pennies, making him mega ultra party time rich. He spends his time sleeping with models whose shoulder blades could cut paper, holding court at the fanciest clubs in town, such as the legendary celeb hangout Maisonette 9 and driving sports bikes while high on drugs. It's the American dream. He's talentless, pointless, and tedious. And we're talking about him because advertisers will pay for spots on this show. Let's think about that for a second. There, a quick reflection is good. Now, let's get on with our lives. Stay jealous, people. I know I will. It's the decadence that you dream of, and it's only on I'm Rich. I'm Rich is brought to you by Crepia, budget lifestyle solutions made from particle board, Rimmer sunglasses, sight for sore eyes, Al Dentes, all the Mamma Mia you can eat, Trackify Wireless, keep tabs on the ones you love, Big Log Cereal, who doesn't love Big Logs in the morning, Wife Beater Gin, the way to relax when you want her to shut the fuck up and let you watch TV, Bean Machine Coffee, Chihuahua hot dogs. Try beating our meat. Promotional consideration and advertising breaks brought to you by Adios Air. Say your goodbyes. Lax to the max. Get flowing again. 
Alpha Male, the Postal Evolution, the Alco Patch. It's the same refreshing feeling of your favorite drink, but delivered transdermally and discreetly. Fanny Crabs Bar and Grill. You'll love the taste of our Fanny Crabs. Support for the sponsor listing portion of the show brought to you by 24-7 Convenience Stores. Where else are you going to buy a six-pack condoms and cigarettes when you're high at three in the morning? Burger Shot. Kill your hunger. It's bleeding tasty. Nochi, because Italians are known for their watches. Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts. Max Renda Cosmetics. And Wigwam Burger. No need for reservations. Closed captioning for the hearing impaired brought to you by Pirate Music Stores, who invite you to hear the future of music. And Tinkle Wireless. Tinkle everywhere. Tinkle in your ear. And Eugenics Incorporated. Call Eugenics Incorporated, where morality is none of our business. Get ready to laugh your guts out. The comedy, Drunk Daddy and the Door, returns in two weeks. You're on CNT. Do you ever fucking go to bed? <laughs> Think that'll get into her pants? No way. You need something classy. Super classy. Super classy touch limo. Prestige can be purchased and even rented by the hour. Feel like a player or a rich executive who just got a bonus for laying off 10,000 employees. Get exotic. Our limos feature hot tubs, pool tables, pizza ovens, leopard skin, firing ranges, flat surfaces for laying out rails, and jungle swings all on wheels. Super classy. Nail that prom date personal assistant or grieving widow in style. Contact Super Classy Touch Limo today. You're on CNT, the best in comedy, news, drama, and paid programming. Up next, don't miss a chance to find the knife of your dreams on the serrated edge. You're watching CNT. Stopping global warming has finally gotten cool. Street style meets environmental concern with this seriously bad, morally good, fully customizable luxury VIP style hybrid sedan. The Karen Dilettante. The top hybrid sedan in its class. That's because it's the only hybrid in its class. Expensive, but the earth is worth it. She'll swoon at your low exhaust emissions and maybe let you do a bit of exploring of her exhaust too. Plus, chicks love electric gadgets. The Karen Dilettante is fully customizable. If you understand real blink, you can make it run on expensive champagne and fine cigars or customize the trunk with a composting area. Unlike our fuel supply, the options are endless. Low emissions plus hot style equals the ride of the streets. Save the planet for only $39,999. The Karen Dilettante. Bad plus good equals better for everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Serrated Edge. I am Estelle Graham. And I am Luther Austin. That's right, we're the number one rated knife blade, ceremonial sword, and other cutting device infomercial in the nation right now. If you're the kind of person who values efficiency in the kitchen, confidence in camping, and the ability to take a hostage at any time, the Serrated Edge is for you. I tell my kids, you can never have enough knives around the house. And boy, do we have some gorgeous knives for you tonight. I want to hold every one of these babies, touch them close to my skin all naked like. Item number 1776 is premium, premium collection coming your way. 14 premium knives. First, the buoy. Mirror polished stainless German stainless blade. Why, German? Well, that's where we got it from. I tell you, I could take that knife, crawl out of the mirror black ocean, and slit a Serbian's throat just like a Navy SEAL. On the handle, remember Pearl Harbor? It's a gorgeous knife right there. Like someone spent hours just honing and sharpening and letting the hate turn into craftsmanship. It's beautiful. You'll also get in this collection the Lonely Wolf Combat Style Knife with Extreme Satin Finish. Fits your hand perfectly. I used this knife yesterday. I cut a tree down to the size of a baseball bat. This is one of my personal favorites. The more I use it, the more I want to find stuff to cut. Usually I start with my arm. Little cuts. Uh, try and forget. 
Easy, Luther. But we can't forget this set is an $8,000 value. Now, you get the entire set under a hundred dollars by a nickel ninety nine ninety five. You are an idiot if you don't order. Like an inbred baby, your head rolling around on your shoulders, tongue hanging out. Yeah, nobody likes an inbred baby. Real pain to get rid of. On the line, we have Kevin. Hey guys, I love the show. Hey Kevin, did you pick up this set yet? I sure did. I'm going to give the commando knife to my daughter. The British commando style. High grade surgical steel carbonized finish 23 inch assault blade. Cuts through skin, bones, innards. Sometimes you get stuck in a snowstorm. You gotta eat people. This knife is like an emergency survival kit. Being prepared is the name of the game, especially when the terrors show up. You know, that knife, it just screams freedom. I love the saw on the back. That's a really nice feature. One time I got pinned under a car, and I had to save myself by sawing off a limb. I don't miss it at all. I love cutting things. And it's laser etched. We will etch your name on there. Patty Sue, Bobby Joe, Shit Dick, whatever you want. There you go. Estelle, you've gone truly crazy with this, sir. I'm gonna cut somebody. <coughs> One minute left. I will not be coming back to this set. Someone else is gonna get your knife, and you might meet them in an alley someday. Stick you in the gut, your innards all over the street. Scream out my name. Damn, you was there. You was right. I should have bought that set. And it will echo across the city, and a flock of birds will scatter toward the brooding sky, and little girls will cry. I can't see how you could pass this set up. I can't fathom it. Don't be an idiot. Okay, this knife here is a half Whittler extreme. You can sharpen a stick, hide up in the trees, wait for something to come by, jump down and stick it in his throat, grab him squarely by the gonads, look him in the eyes, say, it's your last day on earth, son. Prepare to meet your maker. Tell him Estelle sent you. Yeah! Wow! You also get the trapper knife, great for field dressing a sea otter or a cheetah. Or you could slightly slip Can it in. Somebody answer the goddamn phone? What the hell you doing back there? I'm gonna cut somebody. Um, and uh, this one here, the Tanto Blade. Good for heavy duty stabbing cuts. You can hide it in your boot. That's right. Your captors got you holed up in a Mexican prison. You say, Hey, amigo, can I get a cigarette? He says, Si. And then you say, I gotta tie my boot. And then you come up and stab a fool in the neck and watch the lifeblood drain out of him in horrified surprise. You can't pass up this collection. Fourteen knives carry several at once. Time is a running out. Let's go over here. We're going to go over to the sword collection. Item 1863, 19 swords, first a double key, Tana. Similar to what you see in a movie. This is a genuine reproduction samurai sword. Steel blades. You carry these on your back to sporting events or dates. It's about being a warrior. Sixth century Japan. Magistrate comes through for the taxes. You whip this shit out and say, Take that, you mongol son of a bitch! Ten swords! Our most incredible sword deal of all time! This is a historical moment, not a sales pitch. You are making an investment in your family's future. Order now! It is a well-known fact that among successful millionaires, that swords appreciate more in value than real estate or stocks. And you're going to receive two of these. The El Cid Calvary Sword. Good for plundering for personal gain, patriotic motives, or when fighting the Moors. Those Moors are terrible. Don't get me started on the Moors. You'll also get the Three Musketeer Deluxe. 
Peace is brand new. Perfect for a fiery duel of fighting off peasants wielding farm implements. This collection. They shouldn't allow me to sell these swords. I, I, I should be locked up. But just try it. Ain't nobody gonna take me down there. Whoa, whoa, hold up now, girl. Guys, you're paying less than ten dollars for each sword. So if one gets seized at security, you got a second one. You get the katana, you get the El Cid, you get the Tanto. Look at this jeweled beauty. It's good to have jewels on the handle. It distracts people. Shows a bit of real class. This sword here, this is called the King Maker Supreme. Supreme 3 is our very own Excalibur, true sword of honor. Now you know, honey, there isn't much honor left in this world. People steal your car, take your wife. They'll cornhole you if you ain't careful. Ain't that the truth? Now you also get this knife called a Raven X. All right, Rachel is on the line. Hi, Estelle. I want you to know that I ordered the 50-inch whalebone sword of Solomon. That thing's ruling. I'm totally gonna kill that bitch cheerleader. Oh, honey, that's a beauty. Good girl. Religious swords have extra power. And we had this one blessed by a voodoo priest. I tell you, I get carried away with all these deals. Oh, this is a luxury. Hot, sexy luxury. Like rich people have. Incredible value. You, you can't buy people for this much money. And I've tried. Are you picking up the Kingdom of Heaven collection? I sure am. As soon as I get it, I'm terminating a pregnancy. If you find a better prize anywhere on the 19-piece ornate ceremonial sword collection, I'll eat crow. You'll also get this. The Gladiator 9. It's the ninth iteration of the popular Gladius, inspired by ancient Roman orgies. Its short stabbing motions are excellent in close quarter combat. This is old ancient world style Damascus steel. There are four kings of the beast happily mating on the handle. Woo! Woo! Look at the eyes of the lion done in gold on the handle. That's the last thing people will see. And this is the last you'll see of this collection. $99.95. Order now, honey. 19 ceremonial and historical sword collection. Oh, loser, they gonna get spoiled. How about this collection then? Item number 1812, over 250 knives! If you could buy it, this collection would be worth upwards of $3,000 on the black market. What are they going to receive, Estelle? Oh, look at this one! Push a button, bam! Knives open, cops dead! There's a finger groove! That's a luxury switchblade excelsior! You'll get the navy seal! High carbon super density stainless steel for cutting underwater! Plus the bald eagle. It's glory that's also a knife. Sing it with me. Glory be to the USA. Woo! With a wildlife scene on the handle. Do you see that, Luther? You're having a tough day at work. You can whip this buddy out. Look at that nature scene on the handle. Think about a more peaceful place away from meddling co-workers, sexual harassment regulations, and the do-gooders getting in the way of your business. You'll get the firefighter knife. Won't melt when you need to cut your way out of a burning building. What else can I do? 250 knives! A great value. These are working knives. These are ceremonial knives. These are ornamental knives. These are fantastic knives. One for under your pillow, in the baby stroller, in your briefcase, in the boot. This one right here makes me want to drop from a tree, slit a Kong neck, and light a torch, and run through the jungle, plumb naked on acid. Grab it, get it, buy it, let's move it. Ay-how! Giddy up, bitches. 
get you some knives. You're missing out. If you're watching, you should be buying. No explanation needed. We're running out of time. Remember, you need a knife. Order now. These deals can't last. Dial the number on your screen. We'll see you next time on the Serrated Edge. Remember, a knife is something and you can hold forever. Why take smoggy, smelly, germ-filled bus tours? That's no way to see the world. With Higgins Helicopter Tours, you'll experience the real Liberty City in ways you never thought possible. Enjoy our fun-filled, relaxing bridge tour. But our tours aren't just above ground. Enjoy the man-made beauty of one of Liberty City's incredible underground road tunnels. See Star Junction the way the celebrities do, high as a kite and wobbling all over the place. All of our pilots are tested thoroughly for drinking and drug abuse, but everyone likes to let their hair down once in a while. Higgins Helicopter Tours, a fun, safe adventure in the sky that you and your family will never forget. Ah! Remember this? Let's go! It's back, this season on CNT. America's next top hooker returns. Remember the drama. Oh, God! Yo, bitch, you better make me my money. Remember the joy. Oh, oh yeah. I won the street walking section. Can reality TV ever get any better? One of you hookers is gonna be a winner. America's next top hooker. It's time to put women back where they belong. This is CNT. CNT has all your favorite movies. Wednesday at 9 Eastern, it's the smash hit movie, Bad Girls, Car Wash Fundraiser, Message of Hope. May not be suitable for all viewers. This is CNT. Tonight, a major TV event. Part one of the story of a remote Dutch trading post that would become the armpit of the world. It captured our imagination and held our dreams close to its breasts, gently drowning us in a milky discharge. It is the site of some of mankind's most grandiose achievements, and also our society's most squalid and depraved debaucheries. A history of liberty. Major support for this documentary is brought to you by the Bank of Liberty and the Public Broadcasting Corporation, where our budget is cut every year to pay for more bombs. If you take a look at the microcosm that is Liberty City, millions of people, a collective consciousness but utterly alone in a crowd, a million souls crying out to be heard, piled on top of each other like kittens in a bag all wanting to kill each other or suck from society's teat. It is a city with so much history. It is the history of the modern world, particularly for people who can't use a map and like sweeping generalizations. A history of decadence, a history of corruption, a history of liberty. On September 4th, 1609, Horatio Humboldt, an English explorer hired by the Dutch to find a new place to sell weed, steered his trusty ship into the mouth of a great river, the Humboldt, which he wrote in his log. It is a strange and fortuitous coincidence that lush future site of commerce coincidentally shares the same name as me, for the locals call it the Humboldt. Honestly. That being said, looking through contemporary journals, even then the Humboldt River was 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 a polluted mess. The Chickasaw Indians would shit and 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 piss right in the river. It wasn't safe to swim in. With that knowledge, it makes it much easier to ignore the awful genocide and epic larceny our forefathers committed and talk about big ideas in grandiose terms and hope we get book deals. Horatio Humboldt had stumbled into the natural harbor that would become the greatest sociological experiment the world had ever seen, to determine if all the people in the world could live together in a single place. The answer is, of course, no. Liberty City was founded by the Dutch, and all the Dutch cared about was appearing to be purveyors of liberal values. But all they really cared about was pimping women and getting high. They were, in effect, well, 
I guess the first rappers. They wanted to find a place where they could party and kill people. Knowing this, it does make the act of highway robbery that our forefathers committed with regards to the Dutch a lot easier to forget, and, and we simply mask it in patriotic foundation myths. Unlike other cities in the New World, founded to facilitate new forms of religious persecution by lunatics who'd been run out of Europe by liberals, Liberty City was founded not to promote religious intolerance, but instead the other central tenant of Western European society, getting rich off of other people's work. You have to understand that when the Europeans arrived, uh, the people that met them were savages. Can you imagine landing in a foreign land and being surrounded by men in loincloths? It's sort of hard to concentrate on fending off bubonic plague or, or sleeping with your pretty little 14-year-old wife when there are savages with no clothes running around. Luckily, we had a few tricks up our sleeve for dealing with them. When Liberty City was founded at the beginning of the modern age, it quickly expanded its ego and learned to hate everyone else. Cities that were 3,000 years old couldn't hold a candle to the undisputed, self-appointed capital of the world. Oh, the maps were really, really shitty back then. I mean, I don't know if it was the drink or the scurvy or the raging syphilis passed about by the town bike, but look at this map! It's like a Spaniard with polio painted it! It's one of the reasons people took so long to get anywhere. I mean, I mean, the shitty maps. The other reason was the savages. <clears throat> Advertisements were sent back to Europe, promising settlers a new life in a new city that had 24-hour convenience stores, roller coasters, and the entertainment of a nightly hanging at the gallows. Yeah! All the things civilization had brought to bear on this land. All of Europe wanted to come see what freedom was really like. When they arrived, they were aghast at America's new pastime, watching animals fuck and betting on it. Uh, uh, yes, well, this truly was the city of the future. Word spread, so did the settlement. They chose the slender island in the bay, which they called Algonquin, after the old Indian word Algonquin, thought by some to mean place for condo skyscraper, and by others as island to catch an STD. In 1625, right after the colony was founded, the first ship of slaves arrived to give the hard-working, morally upstanding, non-hypocritical Americans, newly free from the tyranny of Europe, time to focus on important things in life like yelling at their women for buying too much shit in the strip mall. The new economy was a boom. It was very different from failed Jamestown, where a bunch of incest-loving cannibals consumed each other in an orgiastic fury of self-important nonsense. Although the exact nature of the differences escapes me just at the moment. But regardless, Liberty City gave the white settlers plenty of time to focus on the important things, like um, getting laid. The slave craze was huge. It was like uh, waiting for a new iFruit phone to come out. People would line up at the docks and wait in line for days to own their very own person and then put them online for a higher price. Some dissenters wondered about the moral consequences of a nation founded on genocide, slavery, and theft, but they were quickly imprisoned as being unpatriotic by proto chicken hawks. Of course, we have very different values now. That year, all the local indigenous tribes were brought together and paid for what would be the greatest real estate deal in the history of the world. 14,000 acres of prime downtown real estate for some spare change, a porno magazine, and front row tickets for a game of cricket. Cricket is the most boring game ever. What do the British know about sports? They're all gay. The Dutch had a land of plenty. They traded beaver skins, a 17th century version of wife swapping, and partied late into the night. But founding a country on getting shit-faced and working slaves was trouble from the start. It hadn't worked for the Greeks, 
and it wouldn't work for the Dutch. 4,000 miles from home and no internet connection to read up on soccer scores, the populace became disenchanted. And the colonists' deep-seated racism and love of 24-hour shopping would begin to prove to be its undoing. What happens when you take a whole chicken, pack it full of mashed potatoes, top it full of gravy, insert some corn, then deep fry it? You've got yourself a meal! The all-new Stuff Pollo Total Frito, now at Cluck and Bell. The meal in one just got massive. Cluck and Bell. Liberty City, you don't need money to drive away at Sully's! How about the Ferracci? Here's a fine racing machine for you! There's been a lot of special moments in this beauty! So special, there was an Amber Alert issued! They never found her, but it's yours for $7,999! Enjoy the power of the open road today! Oh boy, Sully's got a nice one for you here! The Emperor! Fast as hell! And the airbags have been successfully tested by the previous three owners! None of them are in the state to drive anymore, so the car is yours now for the low price of $12,999. Sully's has trucks, too! The EXT! Nothing makes you feel manly like driving a truck covered in another man's blood. It's got dark upholstery that doesn't show stains. It's a forensics dream! We call it the Science of Crime Special! Only $10,499! Head down to Sully's Auto Mart right now! These and other bargains are going fast! Remember, Sully says it's pre-owned, it's not used! Liberty City, a town on the edge, a town at the daybreak of dawn, a city at the gate of the universe, a city at the limit of metaphor, deep into the point where hyperbole becomes gibberish. The gateway to the new world was also a terrifying den of iniquity, and the campaign to clean up Liberty City and shut down the Comatoriums began almost as soon as the city was founded. What most people don't know, but what I discovered through extensive reenactments, uh, purely for research of course, was that in the Comatoriums they used pig fat as lubrication, which in many ways is far superior to modern day petroleum jelly. Another thing worth bearing in mind is that in the spring of 1647, the East India Trading Company hired a cross-dressing director general for New Rotterdam named uh, Gloria Hole. He had lost his right leg in an unfortunate industrial accident while preaching the good word to some savages by, uh, you know, blowing them up with a cannon, which backfired. Puritanical and self-righteous, he had orders to return civility and productivity to the colony. Within weeks, he had banned drinking, smoking, fornicating with Indians, Texas Hold'em, missing church, anal beads, laughter, and imposed strict fines for male camel toe and whistling in public. It wasn't well received. The city was burned to the ground. Within a few years, New Rotterdam had become so diverse that the Dutch had become a minority in their own colony. Then, just like today, nobody paid attention to the Dutch and only passed through to get stoned or screw a hooker while pretending that they were going there to look at the depressing paintings and smelly stagnant waterways and wooden shoes. Diversity was troubling. And with diversity comes chaos as we know to our peril today. Nietzsche said that, and he was so clever he ended up in a lunatic asylum. Then, leaders began to fear the worst. They were totally petrified of the Jews showing up. Taxes were reduced so everyone could afford their own firearm. And um, a pattern for the country was now set in stone. Ignorant, scared xenophobes armed to the teeth trying to protect their borders. <sighs> It's always been a great nation. What? I'm not racist. On August 27th, 1664, heavily armed British warships entered the harbor. The colonists signed a petition requesting to be ruled by the British so they wouldn't have to brush their teeth any longer and could be certain they were better than everyone else. The English quickly renamed New Rotterdam Liberty City 
after a generous donation by the Bank of Liberty for sponsorship rights. Every single place the British population went, the invisible hand of God prepared space for them by, well, you know, conveniently destroying and eradicating the native population. Soon the colony expanded, and areas were named after heavily inbred members of their Germanic royal family. Broker was named after Sir William Broker III, the king's bastard son, who was conceived by a milkmaid. The region to its north was called Dukes after the word Dukey, as the people in the area smelled like shit. The peninsula to the north of that was named Bohan, after Bohan, a Dutch word meaning Dutch word. And the area across the river was dubbed Alderney, after Philip de Alderney, who was the only person who could tolerate living in an oily, mosquito-filled swamp full of industrial wastelands and soccer moms. But things wouldn't be quiet for long. Pretty soon, the residents of Liberty City began to fight with the British over taxes. Americans felt, and well, rightly so, that they shouldn't have to pay any taxes. Let the market sort it out. Poor people will die, rich people will win. Welcome to progress. And so began the American Revolution. A bloody battle by men and women who wanted to leave the tyranny of England's tax structure that paid for burdensome health care and unnecessary public education. This was a war agitated by a number of musket companies who knew they would win whatever the outcome. And of course you can still see that rich tradition today. Americans don't want health care or education. No, no, we want guns and firework shows and wars so politicians can invest in armament companies and clean up. And of course we want drugs. Oh, yes, lots of those. Strong ones you take with young coeds when discussing their thesis and then begin to rub their thighs while they say, didn't I hear you on that documentary? And you whisper to them until they pass out. Uh, uh, but I digress. The American Revolution was bloody. Soon the French joined in the war to help the struggling American insurgency. <laughs> no, they did not. Yes, they did. They joined in by sending a big statue, which won us the war when the British all died laughing at a giant Martian transvestite eating an ice cream cone. Whatever! We saved their asses in WW2! Get me some freedom fries! The Revolutionary War quickly ended. Residents pulled down the statue of King George and melted it into gold chains, gold teeth, and golden toilet seats. The Union Jack was taken down in Liberty City, replaced with the stars and stripes, and the newly liberated Americans celebrated. Soon this entrepreneurial spirit took hold, and Liberty City was unstoppable. Yes, although they were free, the people lived in squalor. You could buy a young boy on the streets for, um, you know, a few pence. It was a great time to be in the top 5% of the population. Ah, it was a great time to be white. Yes, but soon meddlers like Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson came in to change the successful agrarian-based slave economy to one of excessive service fees for concert tickets and huge turnpike tolls. With slavery soon outlawed in Liberty City and the other northern colonies, righteous women were forced to spend time under the train tracks, servicing men for three pence. You could get your knob slob for less than the price of a donut! It was a nation on the up! The politicians were having a field day. You couldn't get them to vote because they were all out having their knob slobbed! To keep the country moving forward, the capital of the nation was moved from Liberty City to a malaria swamp on the banks of the Potomac, miles to the south. Thankfully, the politicians moved out of Liberty City, and the stage was set for organized crime and mobs to really make a difference. The city soon became, well, a microcosm of all the contrasting elements of modern life. Palaces, self-extravagance, squalor, tenements, trannies, men, women and children crowded together like a nest of cockroaches. Just like the Liberty City of today, only with less rich hedge fund dorks trying to be homeboys. 
With tensions rising and civil war on the horizon, Frederico Fitzpatrick planned to head off and teach the South a lesson, but before doing so, continued his great project to bring calm and civilization to all, a central repository for the most hopeless specimens of degraded humanity to get high in. A park in the middle of Liberty City that would become the great democratic meeting ground where, no matter how rich or how poor, you could get dragged into the bushes and raped. Yet beyond its tranquil borders, tension was breaking out. A lot of people were tired of living in black and white. They wanted color, and there were riots. There were kids, kids sleeping in the streets, begging, willing to do anything for a nickel. And there were no taboos or TV shows to catch you doing what is natural between a man and a boy. The nation was sliding inexorably into civil war which we'll leave until next time. Unless you have the foresight to pre-order the box set of DVDs, join us next time for A History of Liberty Part 2, The Civil War and Beyond. CMT Wednesday nights this fall. Don't miss the return of Funeral Factor, American Asshole, and a whole new Shitty Singer competition. This is CMT. My name is Brian O'Toole. As a kid, I always wanted to make a difference in my community and I didn't read so good. Most careers were closed to me. That's why I joined the LCPD. Now I'm on the front lines, helping tourists Hold it right there. and fighting terrorists. I rifle through people's bags on the subway to protect freedom. I arrest protesters at political conventions for straying outside the free speech zone. We vigorously enforce the open container law and aggressively protect the environment. Maybe you love car chases just like on TV. Imagine being able to do that every day. I'm protecting freedom, whatever the cost. I'm a hero, and I know it.